if you hear me, you know this is another session of um, kind of my public uh, my public lesson slot. So I've had a few uh, of my trumpet lessons cancel of my private students. Uh, it's fairly common this time of year because it's summertime and people are on their Trump on their summer vacation. So I do my best to accommodate folks' schedule. But um, I'm also trying to do a little bit of live streaming and take advantage of those times when I have an open slot and I can just maybe press that live stream button and go public and chat with you fine folks. Now, therein lies the problem. Um, because I'm a newbie at this. And um, so I'm, you're going to deal with a little of hems and haws and... and um, Dealing with my my slowness here while I stumble through this just a little bit. Um, I'm trying a little bit new platform today. So hopefully I can keep up with any chat. So if you're here, you know, I don't even have the thing in front of me that says how many people are here yet. Maybe even nobody yet. But if you are here, please jump in and um, and say something in the chat. Let me know that you're here. Let me know you can hear me. So, and this is a Tuesday night, Tuesday evening, uh, USA time. And I'm getting a little pop-up from YouTube that says my stream status is bad. So I'm going to see if I, what I can do to reconcile that. Bear with me a second. Um, we're going to be talking about playing the trumpet on your vacation. So I've had a lot of people over the summer go on vacation and vacation a lot of times really throws a wrench into our practice schedules. So a lot of times um, I'm, give, I'm continually giving advice to my, my private students how to deal with that. So that's what we're going to talk about this evening. Also, feel free to, I'll, I'll do a short Q&A if there's anybody here uh, just after this. I'm only going to do this for like 10 minutes tonight, I think. Um, see how this goes. And who knows, if I really do have a bad stream like, um, like YouTube is telling me, then um, <laughs> then we may cut it even short. So, all right. Uh, ben McDowell, thank you. I see your comment in there. Yes, I am Brett. Thank you for chiming in. Since you're here, give, just give me a heads up, I mean a thumbs up or a yes, I can hear you. Let me know if there's any issues. I don't have my moderator with me tonight. So hopefully you can hear me there. Um, so yeah, tonight we're talking about summer vacation and dealing with trumpet practice. One of the hardest parts about this time of year is, and I don't care whether you're a young trumpet player, school age, or if you're uh, an adult, everybody deals with, it seems, summer vacation schedules. And everything just kind of goes, goes a little bit cattywall over the summer. Is that a word? Anyway, you know what I mean. Schedules are strange. So what do you do? We're going to talk about during your, your vacation when you have to travel with your trumpet or without your trumpet, as the case may be. And then what do you do if you couldn't practice with your trumpet? So so let's say you... Um, excellent. Thank you, Ben. Uh, so let's say you're going on vacation and um, you're going to be gone for... Well, let's start on the easy side. A day, two days. It's probably not worth packing your trumpet with you, especially if you're flying or something like that. It's probably not worth packing your trumpet with you, even though I'm sure you, if you've been practicing daily, it's going to feel strange to miss those two days in a row, three days in a row, something like that. You're going to be fine. If you've been practicing daily, you're going to come back. It might take you a day, a couple days to get back into it to the point where you were. That's fine. But let's say you're going to be gone for a week or maybe two weeks or maybe three weeks. What are you going to do then? Because if, if you take three weeks completely off, Coming back on that fourth week, it's going to feel pretty foreign. Your lips are going to feel stiff. If you did, uh, if your vacation was fun in the sun, it's going to be a little bit maybe chapped and leathery, and it's just going to take some time for you to recover that. So what do you do? Ideally, first, take your trumpet with you. Um, now, I've take, I, I have to admit, I have taken my trumpet with me with the very best intentions of making time to practice. But whether I'm going to a conference or whether it's just pleasure, a lot of times... Just finding that time and making that time to practice is hard. In, in addition to the logistics of, you know, so you're going to play your trumpet in your hotel room. Uh, good luck um, not getting a, a knock on the door for management uh, with the complaints from the other guests. So what do you do? You take your trumpet with you if you can. If you're going to a relative's house, fantastic. Just let them know you want 20 minutes aside just so you can practice your trumpet. Hopefully they'll accommodate you. And again, when you're on vacation, 
that's not the time to really bear down and say, I'm really going to make leaps and bounds in my trumpet playing over vacation. Probably you're not going on the type of vacation that's going to allow you to do that. So what do you do? Just make that, uh, pack up your trumpet with you, um, pack it carefully. If you're flying, carry it on the overhead. Don't, don't check it unless you really pack that, uh, that trumpet nice and tight in your case. When I say tight, I don't mean tight. I mean pack it securely. So package it well. And let's say you do have that, that time to practice. Um, fantastic. If you can keep on your regular schedule, that's, that's the ideal. What if you're in a hotel, though? Right? What if you're staying in a public place? and you don't have necessarily uh, the, the flexibility of just playing out full, nice and loud like, like you like, like you'd prefer. So they do make a couple of practice uh, mutes. This is a practice mute. Um, it's fairly inexpensive and it's gonna make, the, my, make my trumpet sound change from to this. Right, so that's not the sound that you necessarily want to perform with by any stretch, but it's good enough to get this in, in the normal form that you nor that you normally blow. You can blow with your big breath, and you're not going to make your neighbors mad in your hotel or wherever it is that you happen to be staying. So that's going to be your ideal. Uh, there's also a system called uh, Silent Brass that Yamaha makes, and it's very good. Um, it's, a, it's an electronic version of a practice mute. It's fairly pricey, at least compared to this, um, but it probably allows for a little bit less distortion of your trumpet sound, and it's nice and soft, and you're not going to bother your neighbors in your hotel. So that's it. If you're in your hotel, take your practice mute. Um, ideally, just make sure that you're going to practice too, right? Commit to that. Let's say that even taking your trumpet, though, is logistically going to be kind of a challenge. All right, what can you do? Well, an easy piece that I recommend to my students is just take the mouthpiece, right? You can stick that in a pocket in your suitcase or your backpack or you know your clothes. I'll carry it in my pants pocket sometimes. Just buzzing, if you can get five minutes of buzzing in every day when you're on vacation, you can come back and you will not have lost that tone that you'll lose otherwise. So even if it's just a few long tones, that was bad. Now my example isn't really ideal because uh, what I'd like your what I'd like you to do when you're practicing or when you're playing just your mouthpiece is just play a long tone, rest for the same 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 amount of time that you played. So for example, I'm going to hold my tone for about five seconds. So. Now I'm going to rest for about five seconds. I'm not going to count them right here now because you get the idea. And then I'm going to repeat that. Another thing you can do instead of just playing flat tones is bend the tones a little bit. So. You can play around with bending tones. You can um, you can practice try to play some songs, um, just to for, for your own entertainment. The main thing is just big breath, set your aperture corners, get a nice full sound. Um, got your message, Ben. I see that. Give me one quick second since you're here. You know what? I'm going to look that up right now because I didn't see that come through so far. Um, so if you emailed me, I will. Check it. Um, but moving on. Uh, so playing around your mouthpiece, right? It's convenient. You can take it with you almost anywhere you go, and it takes only a few minutes, right? Even, and you don't have to worry about a mute or bugging your, your hotel neighbors. They're not going to hear that unless you're in a, in a uh, hotel that has really thin walls. So... Uh, you're going to be just fine that way. So play the mouthpiece. So what happens, though, if you went on vacation, maybe you took your trumpet with you with the best of intentions and you just didn't get to it? Or what happens if you uh, were playing really well when school got out in the, uh, in the spring, 
or, or in the summer and you went for three months and you went and you had fun all summer long and you played and you had your video games and your vacation and your camping and your summer camps, everything else like that. And then you come back and you say, oh, shoot, it's one week until a band starts up again. Oh, shoot, my trumpet, my uh, my band teacher told me make sure to practice and I didn't. Right. What are you going to do then? Um, so what you're going to do, don't try to cram three months worth of practice into one week. It's just not going to happen. So the best thing that you can do is come back slowly and steady, right? Just like when you very first started, you're not going back to the same place you were when you were a brand new trumpet player, even though it might feel like it initially. But the best thing, the things that I would, the things that I tell my students to do, if they've, I have uh, actually a couple students who I haven't seen for six weeks. Yeah, about six weeks over the summer because they've been they've been off doing their summer vacation stuff. Um, one of them, I'm pretty sure she has not been playing a trumpet. The other one, I'm not sure, but we'll see when he gets back. So the best thing you can do, just start off easy. So you, it's it's important to remember the basics of breathing, big breath from the diaphragm, firm corners here, and just breathing out. And by the way, this is leading in something I should have said when I was talking about buzzing the mouthpiece. If you can't make a nice, a fairly clear buzz, it's okay to just go, right? Just that air and the set corners is is still beneficial, right? In fact, that's maybe even more of a pure sound, uh, an actual uh, technique that you're going to use with when your trumpet's behind it. A whole nother story, but uh, I'll save that for another time. The next thing, um, start off with long tones. I generally tell my students, um, start off with whatever tone sounds best, whatever pitch sounds best. If that's an F, great. If it's a C, great. G, whatever it's going to feel comfortable for you. So get a nice steady warm up and just, I'm going to have you play the low C. Nice and easy. Chances are, if that's the first note that you've played in three to nine weeks, something like that, it's not going to sound like that. It's going to sound more of a something like that. That's okay, right? It's a starting point. Slow and steady. The idea is just play the things that are within your range and is not going to completely wear you out. Okay. Um, comfortable. Quality over quantity in this case. Quality over quantity. So uh, let's say you're sounding good on that on that low C. Bump it up to try the E. And remember what I said about that that concept of resting for the same amount of time that you're playing. So if you want to count five counts for your long tone, then rest at least five counts. Um, then gradually work into your lip exercises. Sorry, sorry, your lip slurs. Let me see if I can swap over here. So this is page 13 in the trumpet guidebook of the e-trumpet lessons program. Um, and this is the basic lip slurs. So if you can start off on number one, just doing the right, easy peasy. Well, I say that now. Um, because I warmed up a little bit, but if that's not coming to, coming to you very well because you haven't played for six weeks or nine weeks or three weeks, whatever the case may be, don't move on. Just stick with it, right? Or find an easy one. If you feel like the lower pitch is going to be easier, aim for that one and just make it sound good. And again, the idea is quality, not quantity. If you have, if you're doing one of those patterns and it doesn't sound good, just go back and repeat it. Nothing says you have to go all the way through this this line. In fact, um, I've got. I think my uh, warm up is on page three. When I have people returning from a, a long vacation, I tell them, you know what, your assignment this week is the warm up. Every day, it's just the warm up. Chances are you may not even be able to get through the warm up. Don't let that don't that don't let that frustrate you if that's you. All right, it's just going to take a little bit of time to get back in the swing. But once you do, right, you're going to get you're going to build back up those techniques a lot faster than it took you to build them in the first place. 
So if you spent nine months last year and that was your first nine months as a trumpet player and then you took three months off, don't worry, you're not starting back at zero. It might feel like it a little bit, but take it slow and steady. You're probably going to recognize, well, one of two things as regard to your range. You might recognize that your range isn't as high as you thought you could play or that you could play before. In that case, don't force it. There's another possibility, though, that you want to just test and see, you know, well, how much of my range have I lost? And you come up and you go, <coughs> and it's, oh, that's pretty good. That's about where I could play last time. Chances are you're really tweaking your embouchure to get that, and you're probably cheating a little bit like if you uh, if you go in the gym and you, and you want to bench press or, or lift the same amount of weight that you lifted three months ago without having any training. You go back and lift up the heaviest weight. You can maybe get it up, but you're going to be like doing a lot of cheat moves. Right? You're doing more harm than good if that's what you're focusing on. So don't focus on the high notes to start with. Focus just on the low. Gradually start expanding that range into where it starts to get a little bit uncomfortable. Take a rest. Back off. And then come back again tomorrow. Push into that range that's a little bit uncomfortable. And then when you get tired, stop your lesson. I'm sorry, stop your practice. Rest. Come back the next day. Consistency is the key to regain, right? That's the main thing to regain is just that consistency of practice. Focus on quality, not quantity when you start. And before you know it, we're all gonna, you're going to be back in, back in shape in no time. Um, Arctic Siege, thank you for joining. Uh, I'm glad you chimed in there. Um, I'm going to look for a solution to Ben's message. So I uh, will open it up for just a little Q&A if you've got anything that you want to talk about, whether it's related to what we talked about tonight, tra playing your trumpet on vacation, or what to do if you didn't play your trumpet over vacation, or if it's something else entirely. I'd be glad to, um, glad to address those for just about another three, four, five minutes max, I'd say. Um, let me get us back here on... Back to our full screen. And um, let's see. So it looks like, Ben, I did not receive your message today. So uh, try me once more. And you can reach me at, probably the best way to reach me is at uh, toot, T-O-O-T, -O -O -T, toot at etrumpetlessons.com toot at etrumpetlessons.com. Try that email. Um, just make sure that will that, that message gets to me and I will make sure we get, we get you taken care of, all right? Um, so yeah, Arctic Siege, you got a new trumpet. What did you get? It's interesting that you say that because um, I'm actually, as we speak, working on content for a new, really comprehensive um, video on how to buy a trumpet um, and what things to look out for. So uh, yeah, let me know what kind you got. No worries, Ben. Glad it helps. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's uh, it's especially common this time of year. Um, I have a school-age son, and he's um, he's not completely in the same boat because I made sure that he practiced some over the summer, but I didn't didn't hound him with it every day, um, and he didn't have his his teacher that he was accountable to as well for for uh, practicing his instrument, and so yeah, he's playing a little bit of catch up right now. Um, he's going to be okay once he starts, again, getting back into the consistent daily routine of a warm-up. So, um, cool. And um, I'll vamp for just a few minutes. I'm glad you all were able to come out tonight. Thank you for joining me. Um, so... Yeah, that's all right. So you got a uh, five mouthpiece Arctic Siege. Yep, that's going to be fine. Um, the main thing is not uh, not the trumpet that you're playing, but as I said earlier when we just started, consistency. So a little bit, a little bit of practice every day is better than you know a whole lot of practice at once. Especially if you're if you're an adult. I don't know how how old you are. One thing I've discovered though, when I've started working um, privately with both young students and much older students, so kind of the range the range of students that I work with are starting about eight and nine years old up to um, well past 80 <laughs> okay one thing I've recognized though is that my older students just like just like in working out in the gym they're still very capable but their muscles break down a little bit easier a little bit sooner and it takes them longer to recover 
the younger kids, it's just like in sports. They can get out there and play football or soccer or baseball or whatever, just hit it hard um, one day and they'll come back and they're fresh and ready to go the next day. But if I'm out there doing it with them, I'm coming back going, oh, I need about three or four days. So kind of same thing on the trumpet. But the idea is uh, short pieces consistently, daily, daily, right? Like I said, you don't even have to be on vacation to take advantage of that that um, suggestion about playing the mouthpiece. If you can just, just do that, five minutes a day. Um, I know a lot of people will keep it in their car so they can, you know, get stuck in truck, get stuck in rush hour, something like that. Just pull out the mouthpiece. I even have a. I probably shouldn't say this because it's it's uh, probably not safe. And anyway, he say he has a, a small pocket trumpet that he packs in his car. And he plays his trumpet in his car, <laughs> or so he says. I, I want to get a picture of it. So anyway, um, I think that's all I'm going to do tonight. So we're going to wrap this up. Um, just one more check to make sure there's no more questions coming in. All right. So stay tuned, though. Uh, hopefully, if hopefully you've already subscribed to this YouTube, YouTube channel. If you're coming to YouTube over from the link in Facebook, great. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel here so that you can get notified of um, these uh, like open lessons. Open lessons is what I call them or or my public lessons because of my private lesson cancellations. Um, it's something that I'm not, I'm sort of experimenting with right now. It's not going to be like long advance notice. It's not going to be, for example, you're going to get an email from me saying, you know, tomorrow night at this time, check it out. Probably not that so much. It's probably just going to be more spur of the moment. If I happen to catch you online, sweet, come on over and join me, and um, we'll chat music. So, but you've got to subscribe because at least if you're subscribed on YouTube, then at least you're going to get that notification when I'm live. So, I'm going to try to do this a little bit more often. Try to get a little bit more smooth um, at this live stream process. And um, so that's all I've got. So that's it for tonight. I went probably longer than my. 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever it was I said. So um, good luck with it. Hit me up with uh, any questions in the comments. I'll be glad to get back to you. Uh, feel free to email me at the email address that I mentioned. And um, good luck with your trumpet playing. Take care, folks. Bye.